Let's go ahead now and look at our scripture. I'm not going to read the entire lesson to you because that would bore you to tears. What I want to do is I want to read the scripture. And as I read the scripture, actually, let's do this. I'm going to read the scripture. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you how I've actually made connections with the scripture. I think it's very important whenever we read God's word to make connections. Um, I look at the Bible as a love letter from God himself. I know that um, when I was younger and if a boy gave me a love letter, I would read it and read it and read it and look at every single word and think about what he meant when he wrote it and try to decipher what he was thinking at that particular moment. So as I've gotten older and as I've really desired to become closer to my Heavenly Father, that's the way I, I like to treat the Bible. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how I read scripture. Everybody's going to have their own unique way. You're going to connect to things that I don't connect to. I'm going to connect to things differently than you connect to. The secret is making those connections. Asking yourself, what does this remind me of? How can I see God's love in this scripture or in this verse? That's the key. So let's go ahead and read today's scripture together. Genesis 1, 1 through 25, and I'm going to read from the New King James Version. The History of Creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light and God saw that the light saw the light and the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness God called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day okay let's stop there before we move forward I'm gonna do it in chunks I think that'll be easier as I read the first verse and it talked about that the um, earth was without form and void this doesn't sound very loving to me. Um, I know that when I have company come and I want to prepare um, a room for my out-of-town guests, maybe my family's coming, I don't want to put them in a void or empty room. That wouldn't make them feel like I loved them. It wouldn't feel like I'm welcoming, welcoming them. It wouldn't make them feel very cared for or nurtured. So I love the fact that it mentioned that before God spoke and before he did these things, before he created everything that he's about to create, there was void. But God didn't stop there. God was not going to bring the first man and the first woman into existence into an empty room, per se. So anyway, there's love in that. Um, I hope as you read that, maybe you experienced something, a thought like that, or now that I mentioned it, maybe you do. In the um, third verse, where it says, let there be light, again, I kind of relate this to visitors coming. If there's a light bulb burned out in their room, I'm going to change it before they come. I'm not going to put them in a dark room where they're going to be stumbling around knocking into furniture. But here's the difference. I'm human. I have to actually go get the light bulb, screw it in the light fixture. I can't just say, let there be light, like God can. Isn't that amazing? He just uses the word, let there be light. And it's light. But I love the fact that God, again, does not bring the first man or the first woman into a dark and empty place. I love that. Let's turn the page. Chapter, not chapter, verse 6. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9. Then God said, 
Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. I'm gonna stop here for a second. Cause as you can see, I write all over my workbook. And I wanna encourage you to do the same. Whether you have a workbook or whether you follow along online, if you follow along online, take notes. But there's something powerful about your hand moving and interacting with the text. It kind of engages your brain in a whole new way. All right, I'm gonna tell you what I thought about when I read verse six. When it talked about the firmament, first I was thinking, what in the world is a firmament? So I did some Googling and some researching, and the best that I could come up with is it's kind of like wind. So I thought, okay, excellent. God created wind. I appreciate that, God, because I know on a hot day, I love to feel the wind blowing. I associated that again with guests coming to visit me. I can't turn the camera, but we have ceiling fans in the bedrooms. We love ceiling fans. We live in, in Georgia. I grew up in Alabama, but we live in Georgia. Both places, very hot. We love our ceiling fans. And I know when visitors come, we open up the vents in the bedrooms to make sure that air is flowing into the bedrooms. We want our visitors to feel comfortable, to feel the wind blowing. And that's what I like to think God was thinking when he created the firmament. He wanted us to experience that wind, that fresh air. And I love that. Isn't God the best host? Verse 9. This is talking about the waters being gathered together into the seas. Okay. The sea is where fresh water comes from. We need water to drink. God was providing fresh water on the earth itself before he brought us, before he actually created the first man and the first woman. This is love, people. I wouldn't invite guests to my home and not offer them something to drink. God is providing everything we need before he creates us. Let's move on. Verse 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And so it was. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Notice that he keeps repeating that. Everything that God is putting on this earth is good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 14. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. All right. I'm going to share with you what I wrote on these two verses. Verse, where were we? Verse 11, where it talks about the um, fruit trees and the seeds and the grass. He was creating food for us. You're not going to invite someone in or bring someone to your home and not be able to provide for them. God was making sure that he could provide food and everything we needed before he brought us here. This is amazing. Verse 14, when it talks about the sun and the moon and the stars, it's very important, and we're going to see later on that, you know, on the seventh day God rested. God wanted to set up a system where we are going to rest as well, day and night. He's going to make sure that we know that we work. There's certain hours of the day that we work. There's certain hours of the day that we rest. 
So he divided day and night. Now again, he didn't want us to live in pitch dark, so he has the moon at night, which gives off a little bit of light, so we're not scared, it's kind of like our night light. And then the stars can actually, back in the day before there were maps and before there were different things, people used the stars to actually navigate and know the seasons. And So he was helping them, he was giving them a calendar so that they would know exactly um, everything was in order and they would be able to know the order of things. Let's move on. Then God said, chapter, not chapter, verse 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the ferment of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every little thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 24. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay, these two chapters, I keep saying chapters. Ugh. These two verses are talking about the creatures, the living creatures that God brought into existence before he brought man. Okay, consider this. At this point, when God first creates man, we are not given the instruction to eat the birds and the fish and the animals. We're only instructed to eat the things that grow from the seeds and the plants and the fruit trees. Okay, those of you that know anything about science know that without fish, birds, and animals, our earth would die. It's these living creatures that keep our world alive. Without the birds, the seeds won't get spread. Without the um, fish, the other animals won't get fed. It's a circle, it's the um, food chain, as you will. Without the bigger animals, the land won't get, um, not fermented, um, fertilized, thank you, fertilized. So God created everything with a purpose. Every creature has its role to play in our system of life. With every creature, every creature is bringing forth life, spreading life, keeping the world clean, keeping it, um, keeping the earth rich. So everything is vital. He created everything to take care of the earth or to, to manage the earth and to keep it living before he created us, which is beautiful. And I hope I, that made sense. I kind of rambled on. Okay. Verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every little creature that moves on the earth. Verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Okay, so I hope as we read through this that you were noticing the love. Every verse, everything God created was created out of love for us. 
He made sure we had everything we were going to need. We had the perfect environment. We had food. We had water. We had wind. We had the sun. We had the moon before he created us. He loves us. And as we continue in this nature walk, I hope that you're able to experience his love in nature in new profound ways. All right, I'm going to stop now and I want you to read through the focus words, the history, the connection to us, and then we're going to come back together. You're more than welcome to go back and reread the scriptures as well and kind of take notes as to things that you noticed. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes and then we'll come back together. See you in a minute. Welcome back. Hopefully you were able to make some good connections with the scriptures and the focus words and the history. Um, I want to take a few minutes and talk about connection to us. I know when I was reading the scripture with you, I kind of related our scripture verses to when a visitor comes because recently my family members from Alabama came to visit and I know that I um, was very careful to make sure that there was new soap bars in the bathroom, fresh linens on the bed, things like this, because I wanted them to feel love. In the connection to us, it's actually relating these verses to the preparation of a newborn baby. And I kind of wanted us to look at it in that way as well, because we are God's children. God was providing everything that we could need more than a bar of soap, more than fresh linen for us before he brought us into existence, which I just love that. As you move forward in this study, I want you to take the time to actually walk through nature. Our world is so crazy busy, just like in verse one where the God doesn't want us to live in chaos. And now it seems like with cell phones and computers and video games and email, our world is getting more and more and more chaotic. We're not going to be able to hear God or feel his love as intensely if we're trying to do so and at the same time manage all of this chaos. We need to disconnect, go outside, quiet our minds, and actually try to feel him through nature. I mentioned earlier that the Bible, I like to consider it to be the love letter from God. I want you to consider nature as the perfect gift from God, besides Jesus, of course. But God created everything that's out there for us. Just like when you were younger and maybe somebody that you loved made you a special jewelry box for Christmas or made you a special picture you cherish that and you would hold on to that and you would look at it and you would study it and you would try to feel them through that gift. God is waiting. Every sound of nature, he's waiting to speak to you. So I hope that you're able through this nature walk to feel him in a new powerful way. There's discussion questions at the back for you to answer and um, I hope that you have an amazing week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. See you soon.